Hello, welcome, and thanks for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gamansing. Yesterday, the 30th Legislature of the Virgin Islands finally made a decision on whether or not to move forward with the amendment on the Hovenza Concession Agreement. After hours of intense debate, the votes finally came. News 2's April Knight has the details. August 7, 2013, the territory could feel the weight of a monumental choice about to be made. In this building, 14 senators made what could have been the most significant decision made by the legislature in a decade, the rejection of the proposed Fourth Amendment to the Avenza Concession Agreement. Earlier in the week, Governor John DeYoung endorsed the amendment, but the decision lay on the shoulders of the senators, who went through four hours of heated debate. My vote is not only no, it's hell. My conscience is telling me right now to go with the evidence. Three senators said yes to the amendment. We absolutely need to diversify our economy. That is an ideal situation. Somebody sent me a text saying we can suck salt, but we don't need this because we're proud people. But who represents the thousands who want this agreement to go forward? Who represents the thousands who need jobs? There were also fears that if the government refuses a deal, it could get tangled up in a long-drawn legal battle with Havenza. But the three agreeing voices were easily overwhelmed by an impassioned majority. We didn't give a damn about how they destroyed the United States Virgin Islands. Senators who voted no said there's no guarantee of economic gain and that the territory has already gone through the worst. Businesses that thrived and they were in St. Croix, when the refinery was producing and was profitable, but they closed. Havenza has essentially left us at ground zero. And as for the threat of an expensive lawsuit. When you declare bankruptcy, you should be broke. After a testimony by legislative counsel, naysayers also countered that Havenza is legally in hot water because it breached the standing contract with its 2012 shutdown. Senators who voted against the amendment made clear that it doesn't mean they're also against Havenza selling out. They insist that the amendment was never needed for Havenza to execute a sale. But the minority slips in a word of caution. Well, my question is, do you guys got plan B? The question now is, how well will Havenza take the blow? April night, News 2. The Senate session concluded with a resolution by the members of the legislature to encourage Havenza to find a buyer for the St. Croix refinery. News 2 will keep you up to date. Now, Governor John Peter Young Jr. expressed great disappointment in the vote of the legislature rejecting the Fourth Amendment agreement in a press release statement. At the same time, DeYoung also thanked the many members of the community who participated in the legislative process who vocally supported the agreement. DeYoung said he believed that the Fourth Amendment agreement was the best way to bridge the party's significant differences and was vastly superior to a lengthy and costly legal dispute that will delay the restart of the refinery and the economic recovery of St. Croix. Now that the legislature has spoken, it appears that the dispute be avoided. DeYoung said he will now take action to enforce the terms of the existing concession agreement. Governor DeYoung made some remarks before the Rotary Club of St. Thomas during a meeting held today. When I look at the vote that just took place, that is but one item of many things that we have to address long term going forward. One of the things that I'm most concerned about, and we found this out as we looked at our numbers, we looked at the economics, is that Hovensa and the oil refinery was more important with respect to our gross territorial product than even tourism. And if you consider the importance of tourism within our community, then you understand the context of why that refinery of 1,800 acres is so important to this community, not just to the island of St. Croix, but to the Virgin Islands overall. The Department of Human Services faced the Senate Finance Committee today presenting a complex and increased budget request amounting to almost $65 million. In addition to budget cuts and the global recession, Human Services now faces a new wave of citizens who are newly eligible for Medicaid. As a result of the recent Medicaid expansion that was adopted instead of a health insurance exchange, according to Human Services Commissioner Christopher Finch, the budget is justified by the fact that human services is a lifeline for many low-income families. 
and we added 3,000 children to the Medicaid program um, to extent that we're able to take these families and get them off of being completely uncompensated to where they know, at least know they have the health care for their children, they won't wait to use an emergency room because they can walk into Fredericksburg Health Center or the Department of Health or East or St. Thomas East End Center with a card knowing that they have the ability to um, pay for the, the care. I think that's an important step. I mean, clearly we, we probably are the financial lifeline for most of those families through, through SNAP and to a lesser extent TANF. Meanwhile, after two years of devising and outlining a plan, the Virgin Islands will be the first U.S. territory to embark on a quality rating improvement system for early childhood learning. The VI Department of Human Services announced a joint effort, as we mentioned on Wednesday, with the Early Childhood Advisory Committee to officially implement the new system in August. The QRIS will help to increase the level of quality care for programs serving young children by providing financial and training resources. 26 child care centers locally were selected to participate in the official orientation on August 27th. After the meeting on the 27th, Human Services will follow up with a staff professional development plan for providers who participated in the pilot to determine fiscal support for program directors who need to complete their child development associate's degree. Also, the Department of Human Services Queen Louise Home for the Age will host its third annual public health fair on Friday, August 9th, and that will happen from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lionel Roberts Stadium. The We Care Health Fair is a free event designed to offer free medical screenings and pertinent information about health and wellness for seniors in one location. Medical screenings will include cholesterol, blood sugar and blood pressure, HIV and dental health. Representatives from the medical community will offer presentations on infection prevention and nutrition and guest speakers from the VI Territorial Emergency Management Agency and VI Fire Service will also share information on fire prevention and disaster preparedness. 24-year-old Jamila Hodge pleaded guilty Wednesday in federal district court on St. Thomas to one count of production of child pornography. According to the plea agreement, Hodge used a cell phone to record a seven-minute video of an adult male engaging in sexual intercourse with a 15-year-old female. Hodge was arrested in April 2012 and charged in a five-count indictment with two counts of production of child pornography, two counts of possession of child pornography, and aiding and abetting second-degree aggravated rape. Co-defendant Caleb Webster, 30 years of age, was charged with one count of production of child pornography and second-degree aggravated rape. Hodge also pleaded guilty July 26, 2013, in federal district court on St. Croix to conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine. Webster pleaded guilty on August 5, 2013, in federal district court on St. Croix to conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine, both Hodge and Webster, who were traveling together, were arrested on St. Croix in February 2012 when they presented themselves for pre-clearance inspection at the Henry E. Rolson Airport prior to boarding an American Airlines flight. According to the plea agreement, approximately 36.32 kilograms of cocaine was found in their luggage. Well, as part of the na nationwide drunk driving crackdown, VI police will be out in full force later this month through Labor Day. It's part of the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign held every year around the Labor Day holiday to discourage people from driving while intoxicated. News News Erica Parsons has that story. You should never drink and drive, and during the next few weeks, police will make it tough on those who do. We are banding together to take drunk drivers off of our highways and roadways in the drive sober or get pulled over campaign. During a press conference Thursday, police officials said the driving under the influence crackdown is part of the annual nationwide campaign to reduce drunk driving fatalities and injuries. It runs from mid-August through Labor Day. I don't care if it's 10 miles an hour. If somebody is intoxicated, they should not be in a roadway. Like the commission said, you drive sober or you get pulled over. When you get pulled over, if you blow over 0.08, you're over the limit, you're going to be under arrest. The Labor Day crackdown is federally funded and it's a campaign officials are taking very seriously. Local DUI related crashes are up slightly this year compared with the same time last year. We have recorded a marginal increase in driving, drunk driving arrests or driving impaired arrests 
over a similar period last year. According to the VI Office of Highway Safety, since October of last year to June of this year, there have been 76 DUI-related accidents across the territory. The total DUI-related injuries number 32, and there has been one fatality. Police have arrested almost 150 people driving under the influence for that time period. During the campaign, police plan to set up traffic checkpoints and support the Traffic Bureau with increased patrols and manpower. We are going to augment our Traffic Bureau um, through um, members from the zones and different bureaus. We're not going to give any breaks for this. So this is not going to be like a tent clinic, we're going to give you a break, and then you come back and get it fixed. You're over the limit, you're going to be under arrest. Erica Parsons, News 2. The Office of Highway Safety says the number of DUI arrests for fiscal year 2010 was 164,223 in fiscal year 11 and 189 in fiscal year 2012. Director Jarris T. Brown of the DMV reminds the motoring public that effective today, Thursday, August 8, until Friday, August 23rd, the St. Thomas Bureau of Motor Vehicles will be using its entry gate for both entry and exit of vehicles visiting the BMV's compound because of the anticipated traffic congestion in that area. All road testing for driving school students will be from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. He says the reason for this temporary inconvenience is due to the construction of a sidewalk in the area by the Department of Public Works. Well, less than a week after the Russians granted asylum to NSA leaker Edward Snowden, President Obama says he won't travel to Moscow next month to sit down with Russian President Vladimir Putin. The White House acknowledges the relationship has a lot of challenges but insists it is still looking for ways the two countries can work together. Cohen reports from the White House. Russia granting temporary asylum to NSA leaker Edward Snowden was not the only reason President Obama called off next month's meeting with Vladimir Putin, but it may have been the last straw. We have a lot of uh, fish to fry, if you will, with the Russians. We have a lot of issues. Uh, to engage with the Russians. The political snub is the first time in decades an American president has canceled a publicly announced meeting with a Russian leader. I think that the portrayal in Washington is, this, is that this is a kind of tit for tat in addition to these questions about whether the summit was actually going to be productive. The White House says the two leaders haven't been seeing eye to eye on a range of issues from Syria to human rights and this wasn't the right time for a meeting. While relations have turned frostier between the former Cold War adversaries since Putin reclaimed the presidency, U.S. Russian policy yeah, expert well, Jeffrey Mankoff says this right, isn't a permanent is, freeze. I think it signals that um, we've reached kind of a, a pause, that a lot of the, the momentum on working towards cooperative solutions that you saw during President Obama's first term in office has pretty much run its course. Republican Senators John McCain and Lindsey Graham are applauding President Obama for ditching the one-on-one -on -one talks. Now they're calling on the White House to push for an expansion of NATO and complete a free trade agreement with Europe, two things the Russians oppose. Co-M for CBS News, the White House. Economy. The markets got a boost today after encouraging news about unemployment. The Labor Department says the average number of Americans filing for first-time claims is at its lowest level in almost six years. Three people get to split a whopping $448 million after winning the fourth largest Powerball jackpot in history. Last year, the price of a Powerball ticket doubled to $2 and the price is quickly skyrocketed. In the past nine months, Powerball also handed out its two biggest jackpots ever, including a top prize of $590 million in May. This is the New York Stock Exchange with Scotiabank Stock Market Watch, the Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all up, the Dow 27, Nasdaq 15, S&P 6. Coming up on News 2, beauty is skin deep. Learn how to bring out that inner beauty. An event is coming up this weekend that aims to make over many women, mind and body. We'll be right back. The VI National Guard is mourning the passing of former Adjutant General Brigadier General Carl E. Briscoe Sr., who passed away on Saturday, July 27, 2013, at the age of 89. He resided in Atlantic City, New Jersey. General Briscoe was drafted into the U.S. Army Corps in, on August 28, 1943. He joined the New Jersey Army National Guard in 1948. 
Now in 1979, he was appointed Brigadier General, and in 1982, he was appointed as the Adjutant General of the United States Virgin Islands. He served as military advisor to Governor Juan F. Louis. He retired from the military in 1983 after having served for 38 years. Well, getting to the core, that's the plan. St. Croix teachers, school-based administrators, and other educational staff will be involved in professional learning activities. And that's on Wednesday, August 28th, and Thursday, the 29th, at the St. Croix Educational Complex. The event is centered on gaining a deeper understanding and continued implementation of the Common Core State Standards. And that's during a two-day Everything Common Cure conference on the theme, Getting Back to the Core. Each day, registration begins at 7.30 a.m. Workshops will span until 4.15. The core conference presenters are all certified in the Common Core State Standards. Well, dozens of people gathered Sunday at the Central Seventh-day Church to celebrate the opening of a new state-of-the-art community service center. Officials say they opened the facility, which includes a conference room to bring awareness to health education, and the development of young people. Within this center, you will be able to find a soup kitchen that will open on certain days to provide a hot meal for those persons who may not be able to provide that at home. We also have a computer lab center where young people and an adult can be able to train and be computer literate and able to be in the communication skills of today's age. We'll also provide our counseling center for a crisis counseling center where people with troubled issues and troubled life can find counsels and guidance, uh, not only through the Word of God, but through professionals. The American Red Cross is urging you to stop by the Sunny Isles intersection this Saturday to show some support, make a donation, and pass the boot. The fundraising event is called Pass the Boot. Red Cross volunteers and firefighters from the Virgin Islands Fire Services will be present from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. to receive donations from the public that helps families affected by disasters and emergencies, especially since we are in the hurricane season. For more information about the American Red Cross USVI chapter, call 340-778-5104. Well, ladies, listen up. It's time to reveal a beautiful you. And it doesn't just include hair and makeup, but empowerment and motivation. The event is coming up this weekend called A Beautiful You. Here's more on the seminars that will feature many professionals. Starting first up with um, Philip Bernier, who is a motivational speaker and makeup artist and stylist. Um, he will start by giving the, the women, you know, a speech on empowerment and, you know, believing in self and whatnot. And then, you know, so that starts with getting things on the right track on the inside. Then we move on to the fundamentals of makeup. We're gonna have Kaya Love, who is also a makeup artist and a model and an esthetician. The, the whole idea behind A Beautiful You is actually about empowering women. Uh, you know, making yourself renewed and refreshed, inspired, reinvented, if you will. You know, these days women get so caught up in their everyday lives and being perfect mothers that they tend to forget about self. So this is designed to help you be beauty again, beautiful again. A beautiful event is in store. Stick